Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to the much-anticipated and long-awaited questions and answers session with Ireland Biker. Apologies it's taken me so long to get to this one, but it's just been absolutely chaos here. Uh, who thought life would have been so busy during lockdown? Anyway, uh, I've gotten to most of the questions. Uh, didn't get to all of them simply because, um, well, it would make the video really long. You know me, I waffle quite a lot but it's my channel, so I can if I want. Uh, so the answers were fairly lengthy. Um, the ones I didn't get to, uh, I think I'll add it into a part two video to this. So if you've got additional questions, then feel free to drop them in the comments below uh, or send me a DM or PM and I'll uh, include them in the next cut. Uh, so thanks very much to all those that submitted questions and I will see you guys after the intro. Take care now. jump into the first question the first one is from uh, my good friend the gorilla biker how you doing buddy um he writes since you now have one of your dream motorcycles what's next for you in the bike world any plans to visit ireland and ride mountain pass roads with me and would you ever buy something like a crf 250l for the island for a bit of friendly hooliganism and why favorite bike that you'll never own so a couple of questions there let's break these down uh uh, I do own one of my dream motorcycles, and that's this one, Yamaha Super Tenere XT1200Z. Absolutely love it. I've not done a massive amount on it yet, uh, simply because we've just not been able to get out. But probably done about 1,200 miles. Uh, got a couple of videos on my thoughts and uh, feelings with the bike so far. Uh, but yeah, very excited. And, you know, later on this year, going to start kidding this up for some serious adventures with uh, a, a number of different mods. Um, however, what's next for me in the bike, if you already own your dream bike? So, my other bike is the FJR 1300. Uh, you all know I'm a big fan of that bike, and I can't see me ever changing it in the short term, especially after the amount of work I'm putting into it now. I've got another series of videos coming out uh, showing me stripping it down and doing all the servicing. Um, if I was to ever change it, it would probably be for a newer model FJR 1300. It's perfect for me. It's such a robust bike, and uh, it's a it's a great. I think it puts the sports in sports tour. Um, so it's great on you know mountain passes and uh, bendy roads. And we took it up to Wales a little while ago. It was just fantastic. Just so much there to keep you going, uh, and so much power, and yet an ability to carry a whole lot of stuff as well. So yeah, love the bike a lot. She's a tank. This one's a bit of a tank as well. Um, so I guess, yeah, if I was gonna get another bike, it would be uh, the new FJR 1300. Just gonna have to refresh my memory on the many questions you've asked, Gorilla Biker. Any plans to visit Ireland? We, we keep talking about this and I'd absolutely love to go um, to ride over to Ireland to see some of the roads that uh, you, Mr. Gorilla Biker, has, uh, spank your bikes around. Um, yeah, it looks absolutely stunning. Uh, I have been to Ireland only once before um, while I was serving in the military, but that was Northern Ireland. Um, so yeah, never been to Southern Ireland, so I would absolutely love to do that. And I think we will. Um, would you ever buy something like a CRF 250 for the island? Um, not really. I, I can't see me doing that. I've got two very big bikes, uh, and the reason being is I occasionally, because I work on the mainland and I keep one bike that side and one bike this side normally, I need to be able to swap them around and they both need to be able to do the mileage and carry the loads that I carry, etc. So um, that would mean a third bike, which I'm not completely opposed to. This is Island Bike, I might say otherwise. Um, but I don't know, there's something we're talking about next year once we've bought the house and everything is potentially a project bike. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe something like that. I don't know, I quite like big engines and big bikes. Um, but I get your point, Little Island, you could have a lot of fun on a small bike like that. And a uh, favourite bike that you'll never own. Oh. So, I really like sports bikes to look at. Um, I had a blast on a very good friend of mine's uh, Gixa, uh, GSXR 1000 it was, and it absolutely terrified me. Uh, more the seating position was completely alien, that low. Um, rolled over. Uh, I had trouble hitting the brake and all sorts. I think I'm too fat for sports bikes, which is something else I'm working on. 
but I guess favourite bike I'd never own. Do you know what? I think it might well be the uh, KTM 1290 GT. I think the Super Duke. Um, I really like the look of that bike. Uh, it's really aggressive and very different. Uh, but I, I, I've never owned a KTM, so I've got no history or background with them at all. But in terms of pure looks and uh, performance, probably be the uh, the 1290 Super Duke. I did talk about that for a little while uh, with a friend of mine, um, but yeah, didn't do it. Um, went for this instead. So yeah, thanks Gorilla Biker, great questions, and uh, let's move on to the next ones. <laughs> Quick question from Alan Cox via YouTube. Um, what is the best bike you've ever owned? Uh, I should be an easy one, because I've only owned five, well, four and a half bikes. One was a scooter. Um, but I think I own the best bike that I've ever owned. Uh, and at the minute, it's my, oh, I think it's my Super Tenere. Really enjoying it, but I've not done enough on it to fully appreciate it, where I've done, you know, tens of thousands of miles on the FJR 1300, and I absolutely love it never getting rid of that bike he says and i'm not writing that statement down either um yeah i'm gonna go with until i know otherwise i'm gonna go with my super tenere cheers so question from matt row designs uh so Matt Rowe Designs is the guy that did my logo for me, which is this one here. Uh, go check out his Instagram uh, account. He's got some cool stuff there that he's designed uh, before. Highly recommend him. Uh, he knows me well. It's a coffee-related question. Um, what's my favourite coffee? Do you grind your own beans? What is your preferred way of brewing at home? Um, I don't have a favourite bean. I have a group of... It, it is very mood-dependent. I quite like light coffee. Um, of, a, of a, as a sort of daily brew. Um, I like quite strong morning coffee. I like strong coffee when I'm out and working. Um, I use uh, coffee mongers. I use uh, Grumpy Mule. Um, I use Grumpy Mule for years, do like their coffee. Uh, and Island Roasted, which is roasted here on the Isle of Wight. So uh, yeah, there's a number of different brews I do like. Um, I say do I grow my own beans? I kind of do. I have a bean to cup coffee maker, a DeLonghi Dynamica. Um, my previous one that you may have seen in uh, the beginning of my older videos died of, of death, um, but I had that for about 10 years. Uh, so yeah, invested in a new bean to cup coffee maker. Very impressed with it so far. If I'm out and about, I tend to use uh, this, the Wakeko uh, Nano Press. Um, Comes in a handy little case. I'm going to do a video about this uh, as a whole separate thing. Um, but sorry, not the nano press. Is the mini press? The mini press. Um, it's got a little cup, creaky chair. Um, hot water goes in there, so you boil your water. I use my jet boil on this uh, if I'm out on the bike, and then twist that on. And then on the other end, there is a filter and the actual brew group as it was as it were uh, and it's got a little valve on that and essentially once you put hot water on the top with your coffee in the base there is a pump and you simply pump into your cup and then you get a out of that you'll get a good shot of espresso um, and you know it's it doesn't got settings as it were but if depending on the coffee you use and also depending on uh, how tightly you press the coffee down into the filter um, will depend on the sort of strength of brew that you get obviously if it's a tight press then the water takes longer to get through there and then you get a stronger brew than if, if it was quite loose. Um, but this is absolutely great for the motorcycle. Um, it's got a rigid case in it so that protects it. It doesn't take up much room at all. Uh, and if I'm just out for the day, I can actually put that in my tank bag um, with a jet ball. And again, it doesn't take a huge amount of room. Or just take a flask full of hot water and do it that way. You could just take a flask of coffee. I prefer not to. I like my coffee fresh. Matt goes on to ask, uh, what is my what is my ultimate goal as a YouTuber and where do I see my channel going in the next five years? That's a tough one. I've never really thought about 
goals as YouTubing. Um, for me, it's all about the the creative process uh, and the uh, sort of the building of knowledge, if you like, within this uh, this videographic, cinematographic world. Um, I like the I you know I like the actual shooting, pulling it together in an edit, um, and then you know I like the feedback I get off Facebook. I used to be all about the numbers. I'm not so much anymore. I kind of make these for for me and my subscribers and the people that have followed me. Um, it, yeah, so in terms of an ultimate go, I, I would just say for me, it would be still doing it five years from now. I'd be pretty happy with that. Where do I see my channel in five years' time? Stronger than it is now. Um, more subscribers would be good. More views. Um... I guess I want to get to the point where I'm constrained by equipment, so I know everything about my cameras, I know everything about how I want to shoot, um, what I want to shoot, and the techniques I'm going to use. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, it's difficult to say. I've not really thought that far ahead. Um, it's very much a hobby. You know I don't put videos out every day or, or, or whatever, so when I do put a video together, I want it to be the best that I can make it, given my experience, knowledge, and equipment at the time of shooting that video. Um, so, yeah, this will be one of the quickest edits I've ever done because I'm just posting all this together with, with as few cuts as I can. So, yeah, uh, great question, Matt. Many thanks. Uh, go and check out Matt Rowe Design's Instagram account. Uh, he's a very talented man. Um, some great stuff on his, uh, on his page. Yeah, worth a look. And if you're in need of a logo, I highly recommend him. Shameless plug. <laughs> Cheers. I'm quite lucky that I live a couple of hundred meters from a beach. Okay. So this is where I take my one bit of exercise a day, generally with the family and the dog. Um, but I thought I'd jump on another quick question. So this one is uh, Mr. Rev Bomb. How you doing, fella? Um, here's a few questions. Best bike and worst owned. Um, sort of already intimated that. <sighs> my first bike was technically a scooter, a Peugeot 125. Um, I didn't, it got me into biking, so it's hard to hate it, but it wasn't, it wouldn't be something I'd ever buy again. Um, best bike at the minute is the Super Tenere. Uh, really enjoying that one. Uh, of all the, he continues, of all the things in the biking world, what one bit of kit do you love and which one would you like to have? Um, it's tricky really, I guess it depends on the scenario, but one of the things I really do like are my ultimate add-ons, uh, phone mounts um, and camera mounts. Uh, just just easy, you know, it just works and you slap it on the bike and it just, it's there, you know, I use my phone as my sat nav, I can mount the GoPros for vlogs and stuff. So yeah, I really like that. Um, it's a good solid bunch of uh, kit um, that I like to use. The thing I'd like most, other than more bikes, um, might well be, oh, tough one really. Uh, I'd probably go, at the moment, um, I quite fancy an adventure helmet, an adventure type helmet. Um, maybe a uh, Schuberth E1, or perhaps one of the next adventure helmets. So yeah, something I'm thinking about. Um, not something I'm gonna go out and splash by, I've got a couple of helmets already. Uh, he then goes on to say, Finally, what's the best thing you have received being a biker is in comments or gifts? And don't say it's at Bikers T700 sticker he sent you. <laughs> uh, well, I should say, Mr. Motor... Uh, sorry, Mr. Motor Rev. Ha ha, Freudian slip. I should say, um, yeah, Mr. Rev's Bombs sticker really is one of the best things I've received. But actually, I would say um, I, the comments I get on YouTube videos. Um, I think it's great. I mean, I've, I've found a... A hobby that I enjoy doing, that I love to do, and the, the the level of comments I get, you know, always put a smile on my face. Even the negative ones, most of it's constructive. Thanks for the question, Rev Bomb. Much appreciated. You stay safe, mate. Instagram question this time from Dr. Foster1971. Hello, Dr. Foster1971. I hope you're well. Uh, how many miles of roads on the Isle of Wight and have you ridden them all? There are 489 miles of road on the Isle of Wight. Uh, no, I have not ridden them all. Um, there is no motorway on the Isle of Wight. There is about half a kilometre of dual carriageway. Um, 
I think you've seen that in a couple of my videos. Uh, but there are some fantastic uh, routes on the island where you just get breathtaking uh, scenery. Um, points to note are Military Road. You've probably seen me ride that along. That's on the, the, the south coast of the island, uh, right along the cliffs there. Uh, Forest Road um, is another good one. That sort of joins Newport up with Yarmouth. Uh, Middle Road, uh, we did that with the Motorev guys when they came over for an Isle of Wight tour, actually. Uh, and that obviously goes right through the middle of the island, uh, hence the name Middle Road. Um, and then the one I've been riding recently, because I now live um, uh, over in Cowes, uh, is Corf Road, which is kind of from Gurnard out to Gurnard. Gurnard! Um, sorry, uh, which is kind of goes from Gurnard uh, all the way up to sort of Yarmouth, just before Yarmouth. Um, so there are some great roads uh, on the island, but they are quite short. One of the videos I've got coming up, hopefully, is a lap of the island uh, on both bikes, apparently. Thank you for that, Mr. Hippodrones, um, who's got some mileage questions and fuel questions, which I'm going to attempt to answer with the power of maths, uh, which would be a giggle, because my maths is not very good at all. But yeah, so now I've not ridden them all, uh, 489 miles, and on to the next question. Oof. Well, in an effort to answer the questions from Mr. Motorev, I don't know why, but the bathroom seemed like a good idea. Let's give this a go. He writes many questions. Is there a part of the island you haven't seen? Uh, I'm sure there is. Uh, yeah, there's loads of stuff that I haven't seen on the island that you just can't get to by a motorcycle. Um, I'd love to explore some of the trails on a bike at some stage. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, but I'm sure there's always going to be something I haven't seen. So I should do a video about stuff I haven't seen, but then it will have been seen, but not when I would have shot it. Is there any part of the island that you don't like? Um... Yeah, really, if I'm honest, it, it, kind of the centre built up areas of, of the island. Um, Newport, I'm not a big fan of. I generally only go to Newport to get through Newport. Um, it's not somewhere I particularly like, and it's not great from a biking point of view. But I have to go through it twice a day for work when we're at work, um, which we're not here. Um, but generally, no, not really. Just, just kind of the centre of the island, as I say, where it's all built up. <laughs> what else have we got? If you were to open your own motorcycle cafe on the island, what would you call it and what would be your signature sandwich? That's a question. That is a question. Right. I would probably put it somewhere on Military Road, um, on the southern coastal road of the island. It just, it begs for one. It absolutely does. There's, you've got a, one or two businesses down that way you could grab a coffee, but a dedicated motorcycle slash classic car cafe would be quite cool. And in terms of a signature sandwich, I would have to go with, ooh, I don't know what it'd be called. I think it would be like a form of Cubanos, um, you know, Swiss cheese, ham, pressed, uh, but, or even pork, a pork Cubanos. God, thanks, mate. I'm hungry now. Um, but yeah, something like that. Something toasted, something with meat and cheese and mayo and 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 some maybe some nice relish from the uh, from the Borneo pantry. <laughs> Shameless plug number two. Um, but yeah, as for what it was would be called, I don't know. I need to think about that. She'll have to soak a little while longer and and come up with something <laughs> I call it the white whale the white whale white w-i-g-h-t the white whale whale because it'd be big yeah that works for me would you prefer a sea bridge or ocean tunnel to get you to the mainland wow that's a contentious subject on the island, I can tell you. Um, I like the fact that the island is an island and is locked off. I dislike the fact that I work on the mainland, and I think 
a bridge slash tunnel would really help with the island's economy. It's real split on the island um, with who wants what. Uh, I think to progress, a fixed link would probably be inevitable, uh, if I'm quite honest. Um, a bridge would be tricky uh, from my limited bridge building experience um, because of, you know, Southampton and Portsmouth dockyards and all the rest of it. Uh, a tunnel would be probably a more likely option. Uh, and we've done bigger tunnels over bigger distances, so it's engineeringly possible, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of for a fixed link. I hope I don't lose too many subscribers over that. <laughs> Name a Moto Vlog channel you've never watched. Love you a long time, bro. Love you too, Mr. Moto. I've never watched. Um, it's a tricky one because I'm not sure what you're after here, um, whether you want me to just to be honest and say something that I just do not watch or whether you want me to go digging for a new Moto Vlog channel. Um, 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 someone I've never watched who I know exists is 44 Teeth. Nuts, isn't it? I'm going to, at some point, get through their, their, their videos. I know everybody goes crazy over them and they are huge and fantastic and hilarious. I've just never sat and watched it. Um, but I do like lots of the newer moto vloggers that are going at the minute, and there's loads always coming up. And I know uh, Moto Rev is almost an ambassador for those really young new channels. And while I'm at it, Mr. Motor Rev and the team, congratulations on your thousand sub mark. Bloody good effort. Well done, guys. <laughs>